So carers are family members, friends, they might even be neighbours who look after somebody who is frail aged, someone with a disability or someone who might have a chronic condition. I've probably spent about four hours a day uh, with my brother, deciphering his stories, um, trying to work out his needs so that I can um, try and help him out, take him on little trips, try and include him in socialising with others, shopping, washing. Most of it's mentoring, trying to keep things real for him. Um, so it takes a fair bit of my time. And on top of that, I, I also work full time in the cancer centre. My name is Ruth McIver. Currently retired, I care for my 34-year-old son, Rob, who has severe autism. He's very dependent on me for his caring needs. Rob needs someone on hand 24-7. So he has um, severe communication challenges. Although he has some language, that language is very much idiosyncratic. He may not want you close, but as soon as he wants you, then you need to be on hand and available for his needs. The caring role is quite complex um, and you have to keep, a, keep your battery full to be able to deal with it all. So it keeps your life pretty full. Carers are the ones that are the care coordinators. The carer takes the journey with the person who has the chronic illness. The carer is the person who is there across settings, across environments, across healthcare environments, supporting that person, often 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the carer is the person who actually keeps things together. No, he hasn't been sleeping well for the last week. Do you think that could have something to do with medication? Um, you're still on the 30 milligrams? Um, yes, 30 milligrams yep. since Monday. Since Monday, okay. It's, it's possible. We'll have a look at that. We'll maybe run some more tests. And they're the experts that can let us know what's been going well and perhaps what's not been going very well. I think it's really important for health professionals to recognise that a carer may have very important information to share that will smooth the treatment of a particular patient will make it easier for the patient to cope with what's happening, but also mean that the health professionals can achieve their aims in whatever treatment they need to provide. I mean, for my brother with his autism, him feeling safe is very important. So you sort of, um, you step into that role, um, you understand their needs, you understand their anxieties. Um, so you can sort of approach problems from a different perspective. So you can also help the health professional to approach things from maybe a slightly different way. In my background in cancer care, you know, they're going through a lot of toxic treatments which affect their concentration. And that care is sort of listening all the way and, and thirsty for that information. We need to target them with our information giving because it's these people which can really, um, really help that information sink in and, and really help that patient along. It's also important though, that we sit down with the carer, perhaps away from the person that they're caring for. You're doing a great job, I'm just, how are you doing? And ask them maybe some of those pointed questions that we're not likely to ask in front of the person or in front of the patient. Equally, we need to make sure that we're asking where the carer's at and how the carer's going as far as their own health and wellbeing. Being a carer, takes a bit of resilience. You can't help anyone else unless you look after yourself. I've learnt that through um, becoming like a shell. You take on all these roles and wear these different uniforms, but if underneath it you haven't got a strong battery, you haven't got the tools to care for yourself, then you really, uh, you'll end up in a bit of a heat. Occasionally I have to take some time out just to, to retreat and, um, yeah, and to try and meet new people or have a healthy relationship, all these type of things, I sort of tend not to go there because I don't really have the time. Um, but it's definitely something I, I would like, but the challenges of caring often um, take your time um, and um, sort of makes it a bit more difficult. Respite care was a very important part of our lives. Um, I have health issues of my own and so I was aware from very early on that we needed to try to give Rob experience of respite so that if I wasn't available at some point, 
he could safely be cared for some, by someone else. That ability for Rob to develop some communication with other people, I felt was really important for his safety and for his independence if something happened to me. So not only are carers vital to the health and well-being of the person that they look after, they're a key to health professionals doing a good job in supporting um, the person that they look after, but they're key members of our community as well. So as a community, we do need to recognise the vital role of carers, make sure that we can do something as a community to recognise and support those carers so that they can maintain their caring role for as long as they, they want to, as long as they need to. It really is the gel in keeping our community together. They are our partners in healthcare delivery.